Hello, everyone, and it's uh, it's a real pleasure to have uh, all of you on on the web join uh, this session between Paul Haywood, uh, CISO of Bupa, and and myself, uh, Hitesh Shet, CEO of of Vetra AI. Uh, Paul, welcome. It's great to have you, and and uh, good to do this virtually with you. Hi, Tesh. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, I'm glad to be able to share some of my insights. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it would have been terrific to do this in London together. So my, my hope is that, you know, before too long, you know, with, with the world opening up, we are going to be on stage uh, the next time around we do this. But but given the audience and, and this, this incredible opportunity to kind of share some of the best practices at Bupa, probably a great place to start, Paul, would be tell us a bit about Bupa, uh, the industry you operate in, and, and the role that you're specifically playing in, in the company. Yeah, so, so Boop is a, a, a global healthcare and insurance provider. So over the last couple of years through the pandemic, it's been a really interesting ride for Boopa, certainly in the adoption of digital across the healthcare space. Um, my specific role is I'm the CISO of Boopa Global in the UK, and my jurisdiction covers 15 countries um, and a number of businesses across the world. Um, Boopa, Boopa is an organization, has circa 84,000 people. Um, and really uses sort of the revenues from the insurance and the regulated businesses to fund healthcare provision, which has been particularly important through the pandemic. Yeah, I, I think pretty much anybody who is outside of the United States in particular will know exactly who Bupa is, you know, and I think given the very large role you play in uh, the healthcare insurance space and actually healthcare overall. Um, look, I mean, I think given given the the scope of the organization, if I think about the kind, the kind of data you know you deal with, uh, you know you you have a pretty sophisticated security operations, uh, you know team as well as architecture already in flight, uh, but clearly you know you you are you had some specific things in mind that led you to Vectra, so I think it'd be it'd be very helpful for for the audience to understand you know what was what what is your decision process, what is the journey that ultimately led you to to what we're doing and then then started this collaboration. Between Bupa and Vectra. Yeah, so, 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 Tesh, you're right. So, Bupa, Bupa covers in its healthcare provision businesses, has hospitals, has dental practices, has care homes, as well as sort of standard offices in the insurance businesses. So, so actually, as, a, as an organization, as well as a footprint of many countries, we've got many different types of organization and business. We have, by virtue of being a medical organization, a healthcare organization, have a lot of personal data and personal information. And, and through sort of the journey that Boop has gone in terms of acquisition and build out of and mergers and bringing the, the organization together, Boop, as, as I joined it, had numbers of different technologies in different spaces, right? And and the, the security maturity across those different businesses was at def different, very different levels. So it was, so Boop, we, we sort of went on a journey to try and consolidate our tool in to really, really get to a point where we could sort of put, create a level playing field across the organization, but also address some of the sort of key fundamental findings that we'd had from sort of various security reviews historically. And what one of those tenants was recognizing that it's actually quite a long journey to sort of consolidate tooling and people and processes. We sort of looked at, we looked at how do we get the best protection across the organization using tooling which can has visibility across the organization which really took us into the journey of looking at ndr technology or network detection response capabilities which to give us the insight into the organization um, and and for me that was key right it was key to get to the point where detection response became paramount in in the journey that we took Booper on from a security point of view because because of the different tool sets, we had no real clarity of visibility across the organization. And when I joined, one of the key things for me was to get that visibility. So so NDR and then the journey with Vectra sort of came along that journey because it allowed us to put put sensors across our historic network in our different locations. Um coupled with coupled with great detection, we need to have great response. And one of the things which we sort of recognized early on is is actually we can't defend and protect against everything, right? So the historic sort of tooling that we had in place for protection really wasn't going to give us bang for the book. We needed to do things smarter and more and differently. We needed to adopt a threat-led, data-driven, centric approach to security. And that's really the journey that we've been on with Vectra. 
Um, and it started really with our sort of legacy estate and our geographic dispersed estate. Um, because if we look at our threat landscape and our threat model, um, ransomware and ransomware in the health, healthcare sector as well as the financial services sector was was pretty rampant. And one of the key vectors in ransomware is the lateral risk. Um, so the movement across our organization, for me, was a key threat and a risk that we need to manage and mitigate, which really took us again back into how do we how do we understand the movement across our organization? How do we bring in network detection and response capabilities and hence the journey with Vectra? So, so for me, the, the, the reason why we sort of consolidated on NDR tools for detection and response, coupled with our EDR tools and a journey that we've gone on in EDR as well, um, was really to sort of really bolster up that detection capability using threat intelligence, using good data science to really focus in on the things that are most important to us as an organization. Is there any um, any commentary you uh, you think that's helpful to share on CBEST and the, and the way you look at CBEST? Yeah, so so CBEST is um, a sort of a regulatory threat led red teaming scenario based testing, um, and when we we recognise in Boop as as part of the regulatory cycle we gone through a CBEST exercise, we we went through one prior to my time Boop which which sort of demonstrated that we did have weaknesses in our detection and response capabilities. Um, and we went through numbers of red team scenarios. So actually we built on the paradigm from CBEST and we've institutionalized red teaming as a part of our insurance framework within Bupa. And actually one of the reasons that we selected Vectra is that we were going through one of those regular red team exercises. Um, and actually we brought Vectra into the, into the organization as proof of concept through that. And actually, through right. through that regular red teaming scenario, Vector really detected a lot of the movement the red team were making, which was really which was really helped us one decide on the journey to bring Vector in, but also really helped resonate around the fact that actually detection is key. Um, so the quicker we can detect, the better it was. Um, CBEST as a as a methodology, red teaming is threat led. Um, so the scenarios are based on threat and based on risk to your organization. Um, and that's absolutely the way I'd advocate that people do red teaming as well. Yeah, and I think I think that that is is core to I if I were to kind of think about the way you approach security overall, you assume compromise. I mean that's that's all like core to to your strategy. Uh, and and therefore I think, you know, and, and obviously I was aware of the the, the red teaming results that occurred at that time. And what, what I found really gratifying was, yes, we played an important role in helping you uh, identify the red teamers in your environment. And so that's validation for, for, the, pro for the product itself, the platform itself. But the other thing I think that, that should also be clear for, for the audience is that this also points to a use case around compliance for regulatory purposes. Yeah, um, it, it, and, it, and that's an too. important data point too. It absolutely does it, Tesh, right? I think it's really important for us to be able to demonstrate the efficacy and our, our effectiveness of our control landscape using using assumed breach capabilities and using red team tests to actually test those capabilities for me is, is one of those key levers going forward from an assurance framework. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, you know, maybe switching gears a little bit here, you know, and, and let's kind of shift shift towards the cloud. Um, you know, look, in, in some of the recent dialogue that you and I have had, you know, you've shared your cloud strategy. Um, but I think it'd be helpful for everybody on on this uh, in this session yeah. for you to talk about some of the challenges and approaches uh, you're taking to mitigate the risk to move to the cloud. Because frankly, when I when I speak to customers globally, you know, the cloud is 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 the to, forgive me for using an American term, it's like the wild west, and and it's a it, 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 it you know where we are in in, in our cloud journey when it comes to security is like it's circa Windows 95 for those of who are who remember Windows 95. But just a thousand times worse yeah, when it comes I to think, security risk. I, yeah, no, I think Hitesh, right? So, so like many organisations, Booper had sort of dabbled, what I would for one for a better description in the cloud, and it's sort of gone on a slow cloud journey. Um, with with the pandemic, actually, you, like many organisations, that acceleration to cloud from a resilience point of view has really come to the fore, and and that that covers two two aspects for me, right? It covers your traditional. Your traditional IaaS type things, where you actually you move some of your applications into cloud infrastructure, but more importantly, it's including things like now like SaaS, 
um, like O365 as an example, like Salesforce as an example, and, and platform as a service in terms of big intelligence, big data analytics type platforms. And so, so Boopa has, has really accelerated its adoption of SaaS, SaaS platforms. And that's really because actually the, the business need and the business imperative for resilience and actually flexibility came through the pandemic. We've we've accelerated the adoption of our O365 environments, right? Now, what, what that's created from a security problem is it's created a problem which is, and, and I don't really like the term zero trust, but it's created the problem which says, actually our data is in many places and many locations, and actually our security posture and our attack surface is very much fundamentally changing. And so, so being able to really still maintain visibility across our legacy estate, our data center estate, our customers, um, our employees, and our SaaS services and our cloud-based services has required us to really think, really rethink how we look at actually understanding that data and that information. And you, 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 you sort of very quickly draw some conclusions that would actually the legacy tooling, right? The historic rule book isn't really going to apply within the cloud environment. And you've got to start thinking about, actually my data is in many locations. My data is, is almost, could be almost anywhere. The, the connectivity mm -hmm. tissue is the opportunity to actually do the, do the understanding and get the detection. But actually the virtue, by virtue of the many locations, there's a lot of data to chunk through. So you've, you've got to move away from the historic logging and review and signature based detection capabilities into an anomaly detection capability because that's the only way you can process through the amount of data that you get from the amount of traffic going to your various data sources and I, and i think for me one of the for me it's a really interesting digital revolution that we've gone on in the last couple of years because of the pandemic and you're starting to see many organizations move cloud centric but actually not really thinking through what it means to be in the cloud because people are still stuck in the stuck in the mire of actually this is how I've always done it. I'm gonna still protect my data centers, my cloud services in the same way I've protected right. my data centers. And actually for me, that paradigm doesn't work, which is why I'm very much moving my organization to be threat led, data driven, and focus on the anomalies because actually you can't process all of the events. Yeah, and I and and I think for um, everybody's benefit here, I, I'm assuming you know Bupa is going to pursue a multi-cloud strategy. Yes, I, I, I say Broadly that speaking. in a slightly cautious way. We 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 I, for me, I want to get one cloud provider working really well. We absolutely will be going multi-cloud, but I, but I am very conscious that we we have a big relationship with Microsoft with O365. We have gone to Azure. We have got some AWS services. We are looking at GCP for big data and analytics services. But actually, I want to make sure that we have the right patterns and frameworks in place and have the right detection capabilities in place, right? So so for me, right. as, as we extend that capability, I want to make sure that my SOC and my operations capabilities have the ability to actually identify any anomalous traffic across any of those locations and actually, to, to a certain degree, I want to be data location agnostic. Yeah, and I, and I would assume that in that scenario, um, a unified detection response capability becomes critical across your multiple clouds, across your data centers. Given the global footprint you've got, that unified view becomes really essential to, to your security strategy. It, it absolutely does, right? So, I, I, so, I, so I've, I've looked at... I've looked at technology and which one, again, if I look at the vector technology, it helps us span that cloud environment, some of those SaaS environments, as well as our on-premise and our historic network. And for me, we need to join all those dots because actually our migration journey is going to be several years. Um, and, and albeit we have a stated aim, an outcome to be cloud centric and be 100% on, off in cloud, whether we actually get there as an organization, prove time will tell. Um, so my yeah. my hypothesis has got to be, I need to protect my current estate, my my legacy network. I need to have some protections in place for my employees, for my customers. But I also need to recognise that actually the transformation is taking my data to many new places and locations that I also need to protect. Fantastic. Well, you know, I, I've got one last question for you, if I may. Um, which is, you know, if you if you are sitting in a group of with a group of peers around you, 
and they said, Paul, what's your advice for, for migrating to the cloud? What, and, and if you could give your unfiltered view, if you would, right, you know, what would you tell them if you could, you know, take away all constraints and, and, and if you were to just be completely candid to them and say, here's the things you should be worried about or thinking about, what advice would you give them? I, so I think, so my advice is, to, is, is several fold, but it really led, moves you across into think threat first, because that helps you understand your risk. Assume that you've been breached, right, in any of your locations. So you need to be able to detect that anomalous detection. Throw, throw away the historic rule book, right? So, so actually the things that we've grown up with and been used to historically aren't going to work as we move into the new, new reality, which is a cloud-based zero trust type paradigm. Um, be comfortable in the fact that actually network intrusion detection systems are based on signatures and not going to give you the answer because they aren't going to detect the change in behavior or the anomalous behavior that you will see attackers trying to use to get to your data. So look at your, look at your technology stack, look at where your data is moving to, focus on protecting your data, get really good at detection, evaluate the people and the skills, because actually the tooling is going to be different, the paradigm is different, and the threat and the risk is different. Thank you for that. Paul, listen, this it's always a pleasure to be on in any forum with you. Um, and uh, look, I'm very, very, very grateful to have both Bupa and yourself as a customer. Uh, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to do this session with me. Uh, and uh, with that, you know, have a great, uh, for the audience, have a great rest of the day. Paul, thank you very much. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you very much.